Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K-E-S-H-W-A-N-I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here. GMAT Review, the official guide, the 13th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The book contains 230 problem solving questions. It has 174 data sufficiency questions. We have already solved every single math problem from this book. If you are interested in watching the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Right now we are in the process of redoing the problems and we are on page number 185. Please turn to it. Page number 185, problem number 225, the penultimate problem on, on the page there in the exam as a matter of fact in our series that is problem number 229. Penultimate is, uh, is a word that we learned a long time ago uh, on a number of occasions but if you're, very, if you're interested in watching the vocabulary videos where we covered the word you will find the, find the word penultimate in our vocabulary lesson number 11. Just type in anytime you want to search for any vocabulary video just type in GMAT vocabulary words GMAT vocabulary words day 11 and it will pop right up. Watch the video where you learn the word penultimate along with as I said some other words. Here's the problem. The problem says how many different integers less than 5, that's the condition we have to meet. The integers that we're looking for must be less than 5 that satisfy the following inequality. The inequality is this right here. x plus 2 times x plus 3 divided by x minus 2 has to be greater than or equal to 0. First thing first. The first thing, first thing we need to pay attention here, first thing we need to pay attention to here is the fact that this expression here, this expression that we are looking at here, we are told that it could be not only positive, not only this expression can be positive, but it is also allowed for this expression to be equal to zero. It is quite possible for it to be equal to zero. So let's begin our process. The key here, the key here of course as always is to go in a systematic manner. Don't go all over the place, go over a systematic manner. We see a two and a three, let's start with three here and, and uh, let's, 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 let's start with the negative territory. If, if if x happens to be less than negative 3, let's plug in a number here. Let's say if x, if, f, if x happens to be negative 4, if x happens to be negative 4, here we'll find x plus 2 times x plus 3 over x minus 2. Now, watch what happens here. If x happens to be, let's say, negative 4, then negative 4 and a positive 2 will give us a negative quantity here. And a negative 4 and a positive 3 will give us a negative quantity here. So on the top we end up with negative times negative which is positive. And on the bottom we'll have negative 4 and a negative 2 which will give us negative, negative quantity. And what we'll, end up, what we'll end up here if x happens to be less than negative 3, any quantity less than negative 3. We're just using negative 4 as an example. If x happens to be less than negative 3 then x plus 2 is going to be negative negative something less than negative 3 and a positive 3 will be negative negative times negative is positive so the num so the so the numerator is going to be a positive quantity some positive quantity and the bottom will have a negative negative quantity positive times negative is negative which of course is less than zero we're getting too it's getting too crowded so I'm going to skip skip that step here it is less than zero because it's a negative quantity but we are told that this quantity must be a positive quantity or something equal to zero. It has to be positive or something equal to zero. It's not allowed to be negative, which tells us that x cannot be less than negative three. This tells us, this implies, this word that we just did here tells us that x can, x cannot be, x can not be less than negative three. Well, that makes our life easier because first of all, it has to be a whole number it has to be integers, it cannot be less than negative 3, and it cannot be more than four, uh, more than 5. So that limits our possibilities. Let's list all the possibilities here. Let's list all the possibilities here. So the possibilities that we are going to contemplate are, it cannot be less than negative 3, so it has to be negative 2, or negative 1, or, or 0, or positive 1, or positive 2, positive 3, positive 4, and positive 5. Those are the possibilities we have to contemplate. That's it. Those are the eight possibilities we have to contemplate and we have to ask ourselves, we have to, now all we need to ask ourselves is that in these eight possible values that x can take, in how many of those eight possible scenarios will this expression be either positive or equal to zero? Let's begin. I'm going to erase this part because we need the room. Let's begin. 
let's look at simple scenario first. Let's look at the simple scenario first, which is ask ourselves when is this expression, when is this expression here that we have here, when is this expression going to equal to zero? Well, this is going to equal to zero as long as one of these two quantities is zero. If if x plus two is equal to zero, if x plus two is equal to zero, then zero times it doesn't matter what this is, or it doesn't matter what this quantity would be. If x is if, if this quantity, if x plus two is equal to zero, then this then zero times anything is going to be zero, and zero divided by any number is zero, which means which means that the expression which tells us that the expression the expression is going to be zero if x equals to negative two because you see negative two negative two and positive two is going to give us zero. So there is our one there is our one answer. If x happens to be negative two, the expression is going to be zero. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for well, we're looking for all the values of x less than five, which makes it either less than or equal to zero. Right now we're looking at the equal to part. We'll talk about less than part. Was it less than or was it more than? Was it, I think it was positive. Uh, yes, that makes this expression either a positive quantity this expression that you're looking for, either a positive quantity or something equal to zero. Right now we're only looking at this situation where it is equal to zero and we'll talk about a positive quantity in a second. Another place where another place where this expression is going to become zero this expression is going to become zero is when instead of x plus x plus two being equal to zero, instead of x plus two being equal to zero, maybe it is x plus three that is equal to zero. And that that will be that will be when x is equal to negative three. Because because negative three, because negative three and a positive three is zero, negative three and positive three is zero, it doesn't matter what x plus two is, zero times anything is zero, and zero divided by anything is zero. So that will also make this expression equal to zero when again the expression will be zero if x is equal to negative three. So there you go. So negative two works. Let's, let's put a circle around in a different color. Negative two works. Why did we leave out negative three? Negative three works. We need negative three here. Negative three works. Now we have to look at negative one and all of the others. So let's pick up speed here. Let's let's do them very quickly. So now we're going to look at the situations where this quantity happens to be positive. This quantity happens to be positive. X plus two times x plus three over x minus two. I'm, I'm taking too long. It shouldn't it shouldn't be taking this long. Let's look at negative one very quickly. If, if, if x is negative one, negative one and positive two is going to be positive. This is if x is negative, this is going to be positive. Positive times positive is positive. And if x is negative one, negative 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 one and negative two is going to be negative. Positive times negative is less than zero. That does not work. Negative one does not work. Let's look at zero. If x happens to be zero, then we get zero plus we get. If x is equal to zero, if x is equal to zero, zero plus two is going to be just positive. This is going to be positive. X x is zero, and this is going to be negative. Again, positive times positive is positive, and one negative positive divided by negative, it's going to be something negative. X equal to zero does not work. Let's look at one. Let's look at one. It's, it should go very simple. I shouldn't have to keep. When x is equal to one, we have to slow down. When x is equal to one, one plus two is three, which is positive. X plus one is going to be positive. This is going to be negative on the bottom because one minus two, one minus two is going to be negative. Again, positive times positive. You see, it's not working. It's not working out. And of course, you know where it's going to work. When x is equal to two, when x is equal to two, this is going to be two plus two is positive. This is going to be positive, and this is going to be ah. This is we have to slow down here. When x is equal to two. When x is equal to two, two plus two is going to be a positive number. Two plus three is going to be a positive quantity. But at the bottom, if x happens to be two, two positive two and a minus two is going to be zero. And we, what we'll end up is the numerator is going to be numerator is going to be some positive quantity, but the denominator is going to be zero. When x is equal to two, and if doesn't matter what the numerator is, as long as the denominator is zero, this quantity is going to become infinite. This is going to become undefined. It doesn't work. We're looking for a situation when it is positive. We want this expression to be positive. It becomes infinity. X equal to 2 does not work. We are almost there. We have to look at 3, 4, and 5. When x is equal to 3, this is going to be positive, this is going to be positive, and voila. And x plus two, 3 minus 2, this is going to be positive. 
this is going to be positive. And now we get positive times positive is positive. And at the bottom we have positive, which is more than zero. So that works. X equals to three works. Voila, we found one more. We found one more. We found one more. And I just realized that I had made a mistake. It says less than five, less than five. It does not say less than or equal to five. It cannot be equal to five. It has to be less than five. I was wrong. This should not have been there. This should not have been there in the first place. So now we just have to check four. We're done. Let's check four. When x is equal to four, when x is equal to four, x plus two is going to be positive, x plus three is going to be positive, four plus three is seven, that's going to be positive, and four minus two, and four minus two is going to be positive. We get positive over positive, that works also. x equal to four also works. That's it, we're done. The question was, for how many integers that are less than five, for how many integers that are less than five, it turns out that this expression is either a positive quantity or something equal to zero. Either a positive quantity or something equal to zero. And we found out that there are two integers, there are two integers where this expression is going to be, where this expression is going to be equal to zero, and that's negative two and a positive, uh, negative two and a negative three. When x is equal to negative three, this quantity is going to be zero, and the whole thing is going to boil down to zero. When x is equal to negative 2, this quantity x, x plus 2 is going to be 0, and this 0 times 0 is 0, and the whole thing is going to boil down to 0. So when x is equal to negative 2 or negative 3, the expression is going to be equal to 0, and when x is equal to either positive 3 or positive 4, the expression is going to be a positive quantity. So there are four possible integers that are less than 5. If you, do, if you remove this uh, limitation that it has to be less than 5, then of course the answer is infinite. There are infinite different possibilities that will make this expression positive. But as long as you put the condition that the, that the integers has to be less than 5, then there are only four possibilities. It has to be either negative 2, negative 3, positive 3, or positive 4. The answer is 4. The answer to this problem is 4. And that's, that's answer choice D. Four possible, four integers. The answer is D. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.